25. But I do know this. The throw that Dylan Gabriel made for the touchdown, if you could get a freeze frame of where he was and who was around him when he was about to be just a collapsed pocket, although good protection enough to keep him to have the time, that right there was incredibly focused and the touchdown pass to win the game, even with UT throwing the ball in the end zone at the end of the game. Oklahoma has truly improved of who they were, what they were last year. Good for Brent Benevels and company. Yeah, that was um, one of the best football games I've ever watched. I thought it was, I thought it was very uh, back and forth and, um, you know, I think I said this on Saturday. Usually when that game gets close, it's because everybody's playing two with their hair on fire and there's penalties and it gets kind of sloppy or they're playing too tight because of the rivalry game. I, I just thought it 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 was just it was just a fun game to watch. It was back and forth and each team had their moments and you know um, and I'm sure Steve Sarkeesian feels this that Bryles offense that they're running at, at, at Oklahoma is set up perfectly to score in a minute and change. Like, that's exactly – like, Oklahoma could not have drawn up a better situation for their offense to be in. It's what it, exactly what it was invented for, and they, and they executed it perfectly on that last drive. It was an incredible game. Uh, absolutely exhilarating final chapter regular season-wise to the OU-Texas rivalry in the Big 12. Of course, we can see that again in the Big 12 championship game. And as it stands right now, especially coming out of this weekend, guys, that seems like the likelihood uh, based on what we saw from some of the other contenders uh, in, the, in the league. Um, that is not shaping up to be a – you know, a jam-packed race behind OU and Texas at this point. But, hey, it's it's only the halfway point. A lot of things can change. But as far as that game, I mean, yeah, just an all-time classic. Uh, you know, if you're Texas, I think you exit that game obviously disappointed. But I don't feel like you think that you're a worse team necessarily. I think that you feel like, hey, we turned the ball over a lot. We had our opportunities, had the lead with a little over a minute to go. If we play them again, we can win this game. I think if you're Oklahoma, you look at the way that you won that game and you feel like, well, we didn't play our best necessarily either. But the style that we play now, if we line up again, we can win that game again. And just kudos to Brent Venables. Uh, you know, there was the dust up with Jeff Levy there a couple of weeks ago. They obviously straightened that out. Hadn't been a peep as far as that goes. And the offense has been smooth sailing pretty much ever since then. Uh, so, you know, that was a big t challenge for them that they overcame. You know, what about Dylan Gabriel and just, you know, what kind of a game would it be for him? His first Red River turned into a legacy game for him. One of the biggest performances of his career. And uh, just as a whole, they put their new identity out there. Of We're going to play nasty, good um, you know, fun defense, and we're also going to have our, you know, big-time quarterback back there making big-time plays for us, and, you know, the guys around him stepped up and made some plays as well. So, uh, yeah, just a, a game that could have gone either way, uh, truly at various points in that game, and certainly there at the end it looked like he was going to go UT's way, but credit to Oklahoma and that offense, like you said, Paul, allows you to, uh, you know, score quickly and score in situations like that. So, uh, yeah, an awesome game. Uh, an awesome result for Oklahoma, not so much for Texas, but uh, besides the undefeated record and now the playoff being a little bit smaller of a margin, but not out of the picture, uh, you know, I think Texas is still sitting okay as well. It's just the, the bruised ego of losing to your rival and losing in dramatic fashion like that. To me, the biggest surprise of that game, and, a, and the rivalry game we've seen Texas come in as an underdog and win, we've seen Oklahoma have the underdog label and win. To me, what really did surprise me was I thought Oklahoma physically was better. That doesn't mean that Texas did not have their moments because they did, but I thought that what Oklahoma did to get off to the quick start, to score immediately, even after the block punt, which usually in a team has a, a punt block, they lose the game. But I thought Oklahoma's defense really was after Ewers from almost snap one, and then, of course, forced three turnovers, the two picks, and also the fumble. I, I was surprised by that, but that's what I thought. That doesn't mean, again, that they're not both very, like, right here, because they are, but that was the part that surprised me the most. Yeah, I mean, they've totally re- um you know, organize themselves into, you know, you, what you're seeing a lot now is the comparisons to that 2000 national championship team with Bob Stoops, the second year, and they went on to beat, who did they beat? Y'all remember who they, um, they remember they had a Heisman contender at quarterback, that team they beat in the national championship game. Who was that that they beat? Um, in 2000? Y'all are listening. Oh, Florida it, State is who yes. they beat because I'm trying to tell yeah, a joke. Yeah, Thank you. Um, yeah. So Florida State was who they beat and my attempt at humor went awry, I guess. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, that's the identity that they seem to have is more along those lines and less about Lincoln Riley style football teams. And I think it suits them well. I think it suits them a lot better than than the Lincoln Riley style teams. I think this is more Oklahoma football. I think that's what's probably the most exhilarating about it is, yeah, the Heisman quarterbacks are fun and everything. But as they saw, that didn't win them any big time championships outside of the Big 12. Right. I mean, they won a bowl game here and there, but they didn't win national titles. And when they got to that point, what kind of failed them? It'd be defense, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, this way I think you're better equipped and I think you're just better suited uh, to go where you want to ultimately go. And, you know, time will tell, but I think it's refreshing. I think it fits them more, and I think that uh, they're on to something, obviously, and I give Brent Venables a lot of credit. I wasn't all in. Uh, I wasn't convinced that this year was going to be a huge bounce back, and there's a long way to go, but they are so obviously – better and so obviously a different team in more of his vein and it shows and they're playing really well right now Altoid, go ahead they're doing well with what they have too like they, like there was this you know last year they they got so rated by the transfer portal it would have been impossible to think that they were going to win the big 12 because you just can't you know think about Oklahoma going through something that they literally have never gone through as a university before and then having to to reboot that but the way that they you know, it wasn't – to me, they weren't trying to do things that they, you know, think they should be doing. They were doing the things they know they can do. You know, it wasn't – nothing was experimental. It was like, okay, this is what we can do. This is what we're going to do. And they executed it well throughout that game. They didn't try to be like, well, this worked before. You see that a lot. Like, well, it worked before. Well, this guy's not the other guy. They, they were playing well within themselves. Altoid Floyd, biggest takeaways, in my opinion, for the Big 12 weekend. Iowa State is resilient. TCU will still make a bowl. Oklahoma State is back from the grave for now. And Texas, in Altoid's opinion, beat themselves. I don't know if that was the case. I think Oklahoma forced some of that. And so, but I, I just know this, that there's a good chance they might meet again like they did just a handful of years ago when Texas won with Ellinger uh, against Kyler Murray and then Oklahoma won the Big 12 cha a championship game. Yeah, if you're Texas, I mean, again, you had the lead there with a minute to go. You couldn't have thought, I mean, against, you know, most other teams, that's probably not going to, you know, be a, enough time to get the job done. And for Oklahoma with that offense and, and that quarterback and their weapons, they were able to do that. But I, yeah, I, I think it's like I said a few minutes ago, I think if you're Oklahoma, you feel great. You still feel good about, you know, potentially meeting them again down the line. But I think to your point, if you're Texas, you also go, well, we had three turnovers and we, you know, did this and we did that. And you can break down that game and see a few different things where if you just don't do that the next time around or you do it better, then, yeah, you maybe get them or you will get them the next time. So, yeah, I think that there's a collision course. Maybe some other parties interrupt that, although it's hard to see right now in this league, really. Um, but, yeah, I would not be mad with a, a rematch, although I know that most Big 12 fans don't want to see that because that means the two teams leaving are playing for the title. <laughs> in Arlington, uh, although that would be kind of fitting, honestly. But, yeah, I think if you're Texas, you're not too down in the mud. You're disappointed, but you're not, you know, worried about, like, oh, my gosh, we're, we're in trouble here. You know that you're still pretty good. Now, if they – with the loss, they don't have time or room for a mulligan. Right. If they want to be a part of the big picture, uh, that doesn't mean they still can't play for a Big 12 title, but the big, big picture because of how they got off to the start beating Alabama – uh, Altoid, again, Dylan Gabriel balled out. Texas giving a six-year quarterback the ball back with a minute 19 to go was a boneheaded move. There were some thoughts and opinions about whether Texas used the clock correctly when they had the ball to set up the game, uh, at least the go-ahead field goal. I, I, I need to ask this. And by the way, good for Paxton. We know he's a huge UT fan. He opened up yet again the first one right off the top of being in the chat room with his Hook'em Horns logo. When was the last time, and I don't know when it was, that a Texas kicker with a chance to tie the game or win the game and usually win the game with a field goal in the last five or six, eight seconds, missed the field goal? When was the last time, the, the last time they played A&M? Almost every time, it seemed like many years, it was against Nebraska. Uh, against Baylor in, night, in 2012, uh, Dicker, when he beat Oklahoma the year that they beat OU and then Oklahoma won the Big 12 championship game. It does appear, doesn't mean they've been flawless, but when it comes to that kick, and I mean, Auburn just split the uprights, but then again, it looked like it was over. But no, it wasn't, as well, Oklahoma showed. Talk about resilient, because it looked like they had, they had uh, with the, the, the going forward on, at midfield and failing, uh, missing a field goal from 44 yards out that wasn't even close, but they... 
They did. Yeah. They did. Oklahoma did win the game. But yeah, and, and I think Steve Sarkeesian. I mean, as soon as he kicked the field goal, he was probably, you know, okay, fine. You know, hopefully that's all that they get at 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 best. All they get's a field goal. But knowing that, you know, he knows that offense. I mean, he runs. You know, he he runs it fast too. Sometimes it's it's not the same. But you know the the whole point of that offense is to go fast. Like that, it's the Ricky Bobby offense. It's just go fast, and everything else is ancillary to if you're executing, you're executing fast. And so, one minute and nineteen seconds for them is like six minutes for Texas A and M. I mean, like that's that's just how it works because that's how fast the offense moves, and that's how fast they practice. So when Oklahoma gets the ball back with a minute and nineteen seconds left, they're not even worried about it. Timeouts, no timeouts, doesn't matter because they're calling a play in four seconds no matter what. The key to any drive that is that distance and with that little time is the first play of the drive. If you throw an incomplete pass, even if it takes six seconds off the clock, you're behind the clock immediately as far as down and distance. He threw the pass to Stoops. He picked up the first down. Then there was another one. And it allowed them to move down the field with chunks, but that's the one that kick-started the drive. Because if you get four yards or you get sacked, we know pretty much there is no chance. Addicted to cash.